What's going to welcome back to another video of the Point After Podcast. I'm by myself for a few of these, but Matthew will be getting back with me here soon. <clears throat> we wanted to wait, but we also wanted to make sure we get these videos out. So, nonetheless, as you saw in the title, in the thumbnail, whatever, um, going to be previewing TCU here today. Over under set for six and a half in, on this season for 2022. New head coach Sonny Docks, uh, his first year at SMU. Uh, come, or sorry, TCU coming from SMU. Hopefully I don't say that too many times in this video. But nonetheless, he's got an interesting situation coming into. He's got quarterback transfer uh, or quarterback Max Duggan um, battling against Oklahoma transfer Chandler Morris for the starting position. You know, when Sony talked about it, he, he basically said whoever controls the ball the most doesn't turn the ball over, things of that nature, you know, the typical quarterback stuff. That's who's going to get the starting position. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot of these two guys rotate the first uh, four weeks, first five weeks of the season, um, which I'll talk about there, you know, how their schedule stacks up in just a little bit. But you lose Zach Evans, who was your running back one last year. Uh, he went to Ole Miss. He's probably going to be a standout, you know, a name to watch in the SEC this year. But coming to take his place is Ken, uh, Keandre Miller, um, averaging 7.4 yards per carry across his career, which is pretty impressive, um, especially to not be the starting guy. Um, it's actually really, really good. Wide receiver Quentin Johnson is going to be moving from the Y receiver to the X. Um, I think he averaged about 20 yards per catch in his career. Um, Sonny Dykes, the way his offense is set up, is your outside receivers are meant to um, – I think the way he put it was take the top off the of defense, and that's exactly what you want. You need a deep threat. You need somebody that can get past the safety, somebody that Morris or uh, Duggan can throw the ball deep to um, to hook up for a, for a long touchdown, keep the defensive safeties back just to keep them off of you, and then dink, uh, dink and duck your way down the field, score some points. Um, whoever's a quarterback, though, you're going to be behind a great offensive line, um, really, really talented um, so you won't have to worry about being under too much pressure, have to, having to find your your rhythm early behind them. Um, they should be pretty good up front. Um, on the opposite side of that, defensively, um, I, I've only got really two things I'm going to talk about here, and it's basically the transfers coming in. It's Navy linebacker Johnny Hodges and uh, Colorado safety Mark Perry. These guys came in uh, to team up with the, the all-conference corner from last year. Made a name for themselves in the spring ball. They came in. They're going to earn their keep. They're going to make sure this defense is good to go. And the thing is, TCU returns 82% of their production on offense and on defense. So it doesn't really – they're not coming into a bunch of young guys that don't really know what they're doing. They're coming into a roster that is full of experience. So that should play in TCU's favor. Now, um, going on to their schedule, I want to talk about a little bit about, about why that experience matters. TCU's schedule this year is it's rough. It's not the toughest in the um, in the nation by any means, but it's one of those schedules where you look at it and it's kind of a anybody can beat anybody, and that's essentially what the Big 12 is this year. Sorry, I got a hair. It's bothering me. Um, so you start off with Colorado. I'm taking a, uh, a shot in the dark here. I've got TCU winning that one on the road against Colorado. Colorado returns, um, what was it? Let's see if I can pull it up really quick. It, not, a, not a lot returning on defense for Colorado. They are, yeah, 47%, which is 121st in the nation. Guys, there's only like 130 schools. Um, so that's awful. Okay. I'm taking TCU in week number one against Colorado on the road, 9 o'clock kickoff uh, or 10 o'clock Eastern time. So it's going to be a later kickoff. Give me, give me the Horned Frogs in that one. You open up against Charlton State at home the next week. Um, got a, I think I got a, f f my friend's a quarterback coach there, I believe. Um, Jake Camp, if you know him, that's who, uh, that's my guy. So then you go to SMU the next week. That's a 50 50 game I have. I think TCU can win it, um, but I'm actually going to be doing SMU next. Um, so if you're a fan of that team or you're, you know, you're curious to just the state of Texas, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And so you'll hit that SMU video in just a minute. Then you go back home to place Oklahoma. I've got that chalked up as a loss. And then you play Kansas on the road on October 8th. Personally, I've got TCU starting at 4-1. and one. I think TCU could very well start at 4-1 and one and then not win another game this year. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. And that's not a shot at TCU. 
That's just you just have to listen to the schedule. Oklahoma State, who is the defending, you know, inches away from winning the Big 12 last year. Then you go Kansas State. Kansas State's a dark horse to win it, the Big 12 this year. West Virginia, who's not bad, but again, it goes back to, like I said, anybody can beat anybody in the Big 12 this year. Texas Tech, same thing. You might could beat Texas Tech. Um, might could beat West Virginia. You know, it, it really just depends on who comes to play in that late in the season. Then you finish with Texas, Baylor, and Iowa State. Texas, I think, is going to be hitting their stride by week number, what is that, 11, something like that, 10, um, in the season. So I'm going, to, I'm going to take Texas at home in that one. Baylor, I've got Baylor probably winning the Big 12. Um, and then Iowa State. Iowa State's winnable. So over under set at six and a half. I'm taking the under just because I feel like this is a six and six, maybe seven and five year for TCU. Um, so I'm taking the under in that one. I'm not too confident in it. Like I said, this is this is preliminary. It's currently July 30th. I've got them starting four and one with a win over Colorado, and then 50-50 games against uh, West Virginia, Texas Tech, and Iowa State. So if you start four and one, you just have to win three more to go ahead and hit the over. But winning those three are not going to be easy. Uh, West Virginia's on the road. Uh, you luckily have. Iowa State and Texas Tech at home, but I mean those are those are week nine, week twelve in the season. Those are not going to be easy task by any means. But thank you guys for tuning in. That's those are my predictions for this year on TCU. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought. We've got a I've had a lot of good discussion with some Michigan State fans this past couple weeks. Um, so hit that subscribe button. Be sure to interact with us. And like I said, SMU is coming up next. Thank you guys.